I'm Mark Lox, Extension Weed Scientist with Ohio State University. I'm standing in one of our greenhouses here today uh, looking at a screen we have of 75 giant ragweed populations we collected in the fall of 2011 from soybean fields where control of this weed had been less than adequate. Um, so what we've done here today is uh, we're 14 days uh, after uh, our foliar applications of either glyphosate or first rate and the idea here is we're trying to get an idea of the response of these populations uh, to those two herbicides to see uh, what our level of glyphosate and ALS resistance is uh, and also the frequency of that. So we're comparing, kind of to get an idea of how immune some of these plants have possibly become and also uh, how many of them are showing uh, some type of resistance. Um, this is a really good time to look at some symptomology uh, of resistance. Just to give you an idea of what happened in these populations, um, the use rate of glyphosate here was three quarters of a pound of glyphosate acid and then we also sprayed four times that use rate, uh, so three pounds of acid. Um, and 60 of the 75 populations we have, about 65 of the populations, the majority of the plants survived the lower rate, and about 23 of the populations, the majority of the plants survived the higher rate. So you can see we do have some resistance occurring. Uh, in this screen, we obviously have susceptible populations, which is good because we can make sure that our, uh, the screen's actually working. So you see an example here of a plant that after two weeks uh, is dead. Past that, we do see a variety of responses and a variety of symptomology depending on the level of resistance. So we know this from our previous uh, work with giant ragweed. Um, so you can see some of the lower level resistance that we see uh, in some of these populations where plants are stunted quite a bit. You can see some of the typical glyphosate response there, the yellowing, the stunning. Um, in some cases, uh, some distorted growth. Um, these are populations that the plants will survive, um, but they're obviously greatly injured. Um, but, but our past uh, research would indicate that they will come back uh, and do pretty well. Um, you can see sort of a, a variety of responses uh, that are probably look about like that, uh, from something like this uh, to something like this. Um, so that's typical of sort of low level resistance. Um, we also have some pretty high level resistance out here. I'll give you one example um, plant here that survived uh, four pounds with basically no symptomology at all. And the rest of the plants that we sprayed at that rate for this population, we either saw this, uh, basically no response, or we saw something we call a hypersensitive response or rapid necrosis. What's interesting us about this response is that um, glyphosate doesn't normally cause any type of burning on leaves per se. It's a systemic herbicide, so you see the yellowing and the effect in the new growth. But what's happening across the region is some of the giant ragweed populations um, that uh, definitely do have a higher level of resistance to glyphosate are showing this rapid necrosis where within a day uh, after application, the existing leaves, uh, you can see the burning, the, the death of the tissue, and eventually the uh, older leaves that show that much symptomology will drop off. What happens at the same time though is the plant slows down briefly and then it continues to shoot new growth right out the top. And these are some of the most resistant uh, plants that we have. So you can see that, um, that same population, um, and that's been applied about a week ago. That same population, here's another plant that within a week is showing just minor symptomology. So we obviously are identifying a few populations in here that have uh, a pretty high level of glyphosate resistance. So one of the things to keep in mind if you're starting to have some issues with giant ragweed is to look for that type of a response. And that's an indicator of glyphosate resistance uh, at the higher level. On my left, we have the screen to chloranzolam or first rate, uh, which is a herbicide we're using to screen for ALS resistance. So classic is an ALS inhibitor, synchrony is, uh, and some other herbicides. Um, this is not really surprising, but of the 75 populations we have here, about 65 of them are surviving both rates. Uh, first rate, 0.3 ounces and also four times that uh, at 1.2 ounces. It's not surprising because uh, as Roundup Ready Beans took off, we were at that point starting to identify a lot of giant ragweed populations that had ALS resistance. If you do the quick number here, numbers here, uh, you know, with 65 of the 75 populations surviving first rate um, and at the lower rate of glyphosate, about the same number of populations surviving glyphosate, we obviously have, uh, and this is one of the reasons we did this screen, obviously have a number of populations that are resistant to both ALS inhibitors and glyphosate, multiple resistance, which makes our control a lot more difficult. Uh, within the chloranzolam or first rate screen, you can see uh, the range from plants that are dead, uh, plants that do not have ALS resistance, um, to sort of a lower level, kind of to a moderate level, uh, ALS resistance in the field and a lot of times when we identify ALS resistance in a field the populations progress to the point you don't see much symptomology at all. But you can see some plants with a low level of resistance to Clarence Lamb, 
uh, possibly a slightly higher level where you see some of that typical uh, growth distortion, a little bit of growth distortion, yellowing, and some stunning uh, to some plants here that are really not showing hardly any symptomology at all, are very slight stunning and yellowing to begin with, uh, and then came back and did just fine. Uh, so again, the reasons for doing this screen are to see where we stand with herbicide resistance in giant ragweed and indicates that at least in those fields that uh, control is not very good, we tend to have uh, what appears to be both glyphosate and ALS resistance, which limits our options. Uh, you'll see more information from us on this in the corn newsletter and you can get recommendations for these type of populations in the OSU weed control guide.